9, and we're going to be working about data analysis and statistics. And the first thing that we're going to talk about in section 1 is called scatter plots. And a scatter plot is basically a graph that shows the relationship between two data sets. So I'm basically comparing two things and seeing if there is a relationship. And uh, when we do a scatter plot, these are just some examples that what the scatter plot may look like. So for instance, here I have just a very basic graph. There's no numbers on it, and I'm comparing time and distance. And if you notice that the points here, they all kind of go in this direction right here, and it looks like it's going, they're kind of making a line. Well, this is what we would call a positive um, relationship because they're going up positively. As time increases, so does distance. Then we have this particular one, and there doesn't seem to be any discernible pattern whatsoever, so there's basically no relationship, at least one that we cannot see anyway at this point in time. And then lastly, if you look at this one, as time increases, distance decreases, and you can see a pattern that is going this, this direction. This would be what we would call a ne negative relationship. All right, so just keep those in mind. As it's going up in this direction, it's a positive direction. Uh, so it's a positive relationship. As it goes in the negative direction, it's a negative relationship. And if it doesn't really, you can't really tell, then it's really no relationship at all. These are the most three common that you're probably going to see uh, for a little while dealing with linear. However, there are other types of relationships that we can see through scatter plot. And those relationships would be nonlinear. Now, this is something that we're not going into a lot of discussion about. I just want you to see the potential here. Notice how in this particular one, it kind of curves a little bit as it's going down. And the same thing happens here as it curves a little bit as it goes up. And this one right here, we are curving down and then we curve back up. These are nonlinear scatter plots. And that's really all you need to know. The last three things are what we would call gaps, clusters, and outliers. So if I were to have a very basic scatter plot, and I've got some points here, and then all of a sudden there's a gap. Well, that makes sense. There's a gap between this set and this set, but it does look like it's going in a positive relationship. But there's a little gap there, so we cannot be sure. Clusters are kind of the opposite, where you have a positive relationship, but you might not be able to see it very good on your paper, but there's a group of data points that all want to cluster up into one spot. And so that's why we call it clusters. Kind of great, basically think of it like this, it grapes up there. And then outliers, well, we'll have a relationship, whether it's positive or negative, and it just seems to be going so well, but then there's this one person or this one dot that just says, I don't want to follow the rest of you. I'm going to be an outlier. So that guy, he just kind of sticks out, no pun intended, like a sore thumb. He doesn't seem to belong with the rest of the group. That's why we call those outliers. So those are the basic terminology of how you can see a scatter plot. But let's just go ahead and start looking at some real questions here and start applying some of this knowledge. All right, so describe the relationship you expect between the data. Explain. So number one, it says the age of, the, of an automobile and the odometer reading. So if we were to kind of think this one through and... I were to draw like a little bit of, uh, of a graph, this would be my age and this would be my odometer, okay? As my age increases, so does the odometer reading because of one simple thing. The more you have a car, the more likely you are to drive it. And as you are driving it, so to, that means the odometer number will go up. So this would definitely be a positive relationship because as age increases, so does the odometer reading. Well, let's look at the next one. Time spent fishing and the amount of bait in the bucket. Well, let's do another little side graph over here. We'll have this as time, and then we'll call this bait. And think this through. When you first start fishing, you've probably got a lot of bait in your bucket because you haven't done anything. But as you go fishing and you start to catch fish or you get a uh, bite and the fish happens to take your bait away, what ends up happening is your bait begins to lower. So as time increases, the longer you go fishing, bait goes lower. So in this particular case, 
That's a negative relationship. Three, it says the number of passengers in a car and the number of traffic lights on the route. Well, if you think about it, how these two don't make any sense. They don't have any relationship whatsoever. I can drive the same route as you do going to school and say that we're going through four traffic lights, but the number of people in my car can be completely different from the number of yours. There's no re relationship between the amount of people in your car and the amount of stoplights that you have to go through. So in this right here, there is none. There is no relationship whatsoever in this particular case. All right? Now, let's go to four. It says, the table shows the height and feet of the waves at a beach, numbers of surfers at the beach. Write the ordered pairs from the table and plot them on a coordinate plane. So if we were to look at this, we're going to say, um, we'll call this X and we'll call this Y. Here's the reason why I'm labeling this X. Recall back in chapter six that we stated that X would be your, uh, your input value or your independent variable. Think this one through. The higher your, your waves, more than likely, you're going to have more people who want to surf, all right? Because nobody wants to surf uh, when the waves are really, really low and really, really small. So the higher the waves, the more people are going to try to surf, which kind of makes sense. And as you can see, higher waves, we kind of had some similar situations here. But if we were to plot these things, we can go ahead and label our points as 3 and 24, 6 and 61, and 5 and 56, as well as 1 and 15. Let's go ahead and graph that. Why don't you pause the video and try to graph this on your own? All right, so what I did is I set mine up as my x value happen, happens to be the height of my waves, and this right here is the number of people. Okay, on my y-axis. And what I did is I counted by fives on my y and counted by ones and just to kind of give it a little bit more space in there. I'm gonna actually draw these a little bit bigger cause I cannot see them very well on the screen there. There we go. And so if we were to look at this with my four points, it looks like we have definitely a positive relationship. Again, I cannot say that with a, uh, a right certainty because there's only four points here. We would really need more data to really prove that this is indeed a positive relationship. And you're going to hear me also say the term positive correlation because that's the same thing. So we can say that this is positive. So again, we have a positive relationship, a positive correlation. All right, so number five. It says the scatter plot shows the numbers of lawns mowed by a local lawn care business during one week. All right. So just kind of looking at this, uh, days work in lawns mowed as the week went by, more lawns got mowed. So we can go ahead and say that this is a positive relationship. Um, so we can see that pretty easy. Anything else that we can tell from this? Um, no, nothing overly drastic that we can tell, but let's go ahead and look at our questions. How many days does it take to mow 30 lawns? Well, lawn, total of miles mow looks like four days. How did I get that? Well, this is lawns mowed and this is 30 and that took four days to get there. All right, that's pretty easy to understand in that regards. Let's look at the next question. The next question is, how about, uh, about how many lawns can be mowed in one day? Hmm, this is a difficult one because we're kind of having to make an estimate here. But if we look one day, it looks like it's about halfway between 10. So I would say maybe 11. So let's just do a little uh, a question here. So after two days, we went from here to 20. Okay, that's not too terribly bad. And then from, so we'll say that this was 11. We're going to say that there was a jump of about 9 here. And then if we were to look at the next one, 
looks like another jump of, I would say, five, six, seven. So I want to do a little bit of an estimate here just by looking at this. And I'm going to say that it looks like we could probably mow at least, I'm going to do a range here, anywhere between eight to 10 lawns a day. Now, the problem that you're thinking is like, how did I get that, Mr. Lewis? Well, this is just looking at the data. I will tell you that there is a better way of doing this to get something more exact, but right now we're just kind of taking an estimate of what we think. All right, and then lastly, C, describe the relationship shown by the data. Well, this is pretty straightforward. It's positive. We talked about that a while ago. All right, now, the next one says, describe the relationship between the data. Identify any outliers. Outliers, as you recall, are basically pieces of data that just don't seem like they follow the rest of the group. Gaps, which are basically what they say is a gap in the data. And then lastly, clusters, which is where there's a bunch of data points all, well, no pun intended, clustered together. So if we were to look at this one, hmm, this is an interesting one. Notice how that we do have a, like a positive correlation here. To say that there was any major outliers, I can't really say that that's really noticeable. However, I would say that there is a gap of data here. So I would say that we do have a, a kind of a gap right here in comparison to the other ones because all of a sudden it just kind of shoots up. So that would be kind of a gap area. Um, clusters. I can't really say that I would call any of this a cluster right now because they're, yes, they're close together in a few places, but they're not really like graped together. And I'll show you what I mean by graped. So I would say that I just have maybe a little bit of a gap here, but even that's kind of hard to say with a certainty. All right, number seven. Uh, let's look at this one. This one's a little bit more clearer. So if I were to look at this one, it seems like it's going in this type of a pattern. And this guy right here would definitely, I would call this my outlier very easily because it just doesn't seem to be following the pattern of the rest of them. Gaps, um, I would, again, because of that, um, I think that outlier would, I, I kind of would leave that one alone, the gaps, even though there's a big gap here, I would, yeah, I'll say there's a gap there. It does, it's just kind of hard to say again without having more information. And then lastly, clusters. Well, this one's really easy to see. If this is a gap where there just seems to be nothing there, this right here is definitely a cluster where things seem to be all, for again, saying the word, clustered together. And basically, that's kind of it, is just being able to read a scatter plot and just determining some of the patterns. And that's it for this video. And as always, you know how to find me, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.